Hi, my name is Dr. Amy Giddings, and today we're headed to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where we'll speak with Cindy Griffin, head women's basketball coach at St. Joseph's University. We'll have the opportunity to speak with Cindy over the next three episodes. You know, it's intriguing actually, how coaches decide to become a coach. Some women have a sport history where they play in one sport their entire lives. Others have a multitude of sports that they participate in, eventually honing in on just one sport that they end up coaching. One thing's for certain, Cindy Griffin has a lot to say about her sport experience. Let's listen to what she has to say. Drive, Kelsey. Straight up, good, good help, Mariah. Now recover, recover out. Box, 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 good. Hi, I'm Coach Cindy Griffin, and I got started in coaching um, right out of college. As a kid growing up, I played basketball, I played field hockey, I played softball, and just being around athletics my whole life. I'm the youngest of five children. All, all five of us played basketball, and certainly it was my passion. And had a lot of great experiences during summer camps and um, made some, some AAU teams and played it pretty much year round and, and really got a, a great taste of what it might like, be like to be a Division I player and was able to play in Division I here at St. Joseph's University and to be able to coach here is even, even sweeter. But um, you know, I think being in sport really helps you understand the game and then from a coaching standpoint, I worked a lot of camps and it, was, it, was, it allowed me to teach the game the way that I was taught the game. I had a lot of great mentors and really wanted to give back to the game and, and that's how I got into coaching. Free throws, free throws, very important. Layups and free throws, down the stretch, winning close games. Ready, go! My first real coaching experience came at uh, Vanderbilt University in Nashville, Tennessee. My, my coach that was at St. Joseph's, Jim Foster, who's now at Ohio State, was the uh, Vanderbilt coach at that time. I was graduating from St. Joe's and it was either be an accountant or uh, go into coaching. So here, as, as the story is, the, a job at Duquesne University was open. Uh, the former assistant from Penn State who recruited me at, at Penn State um, was the head coach at Duquesne, or was getting the, getting the job at Duquesne. And so I had conversations with him, so I rolled it off of uh, Coach Foster and said, what do you think about this? And he said, well, wait a second here. I may have an opportunity for you here. So it was at that moment that I had to make a decision. Do I go with um, you know, maybe a, a, a first or second assistant right out of high, a college to Duquesne, or you know, really go at, from the bottom level at a top conference like the SEC uh, with somebody I know a little bit more um, familiar with. Obviously, he was my coach. So that decision was um, I, I, I took a leap of faith, you know, uprooted, being from Philadelphia, having gone to school in Philadelphia, and then rerouting to Nashville, Tennessee um, was something very foreign to me, but very exciting as a 22-year-old. So uh, he had brought me down um, to be their third assistant. At the time, it was called the restricted earnings position. And you know, you certainly didn't get a whole lot of money, but you got a little taste of everything. And my job was to scout every game. And it really, it was the number one conference in the country. So for me to scout every game, I was a little bit nervous as a 22 year old. But when you scout and you watch a lot of film, you get to learn the game. You get to be able to dissect the film and, and understand what people are running and pick things up. And that really helped me understand the game from a different perspective. As a player, you know, you go out there and play, you study the game, but you really don't, you really don't know the game as well. And um, that experience really helped me um, become, become a head coach. Here we go, Red. Here we go, Red. Shell principles now. Know who you're guarding, personnel. You know, I thank him for that opportunity every day because if I didn't take that leap of faith with him, then I wouldn't be in the position that I am today. We thank you for joining us for this episode of The Real Women of Coaching, part of the Women's Coaching Network. Join us next time as Cindy Griffin shares valuable advice for women coaches looking to achieve work-life balance.